Okay, folks, well, welcome to Coffee with Job inside tonight, today, because uh, it was so noisy yesterday, and I'm recording this on my laptop, so the quality may not be quite as good, but I've just had a tremendous time discussing with Greg Sheridan in our latest Ask podcast on, on culture, which will be coming out in, in a couple of weeks, and you can catch up on some of the other ones. But this, this, this is just superb. Because I think this speaks directly to our context and culture right now. And by the way, thank you for those of you who are in touch. Um, it's it's interesting how many people contact me. I'm not bothered about the numbers, to be honest, in terms of how many people watch this. It's, it's always nice that, that people do, but I'm more concerned that people are helped. So I'd rather have you know, a dozen people who are helped than 20,000 who just watch it. And uh, it's interesting to me that those to me that those of you who contact me we're talking about people who've experienced death a loss of a loved one who themselves are facing up to death and actually even in the, in the course of doing this there have been people who've died who've been watching this and it's almost as though the lord has been uh, preparing them in some way now that's not to be miserable in fact that is to say that what job is such a great book because it deals with reality and especially well th th listen to this this is job 35 verse 9 People cry out under a load of oppression. They plead for relief from the armor of the powerful. But no one says, where is God, my maker, who gives songs in the night, who teaches us more than he teaches the beasts of the earth and makes us wider, wiser than the birds in the sky. He does not answer when people cry out because of the arrogance of the wicked. Indeed, God does not listen to their empty plea. The Almighty pays no attention to it. How much less then will he listen when you say that you do not see him? that your case is before him and you must wait for him, and further that his anger never punishes and he does not take the least notice of wickedness. So Job opens his mouth with empty talk. Without knowledge, he multiplies words. Now, what Eli Hugh is saying here is you can't expect God to answer you because you're crying out, but you're like so many people who are oppressed. You cry out to God, but you're not praying to him. So it's like when people say, well, why doesn't God do something about this? But what are they asking? What are they saying? They don't ask, where is God my maker? They, they don't have the hearts that long for God. Now, I think Job does, actually. And I think Eli Hughes' criticism of him here may be um, unfair. I don't particularly know. But the general point is this. While people cry, they don't pray. Their cry is a cry, as I think Christopher Ash says, is a cry of anguish, but it's not a cry directed with faith to God. Now, this expression, who gives songs in the night, that's a unique expression in the Old Testament. And it probably refers to songs of trust that believers have in dark times. Or the songs that God gives us, which indicate that there is a morning coming. It's a dark time, but there is a morning coming. And so what J Eli Hugh is speaking about, he's speaking about people who don't really pray. They cry out, but it's not a, a, a prayer to the God whom they know, a God whom they trust, a God whom they love. In fact, their, their cry is empty. He does not answer when people cry out. And empty here means deceitful and worthless. It's a cry that comes from unbelieving hearts. Now, Eli Hugh is not saying, and God is not saying, that there's nobody who, cry, who, do, who doesn't cry out with faith. He's not saying that. But he is saying that there's a lot of empty talk. There's a lot of empty prayers. There's a lot of anguish and anger that is misdirected. I think Eli Hugh is giving the advice of a faithful friend. The wounds of a friend are faithful, Proverbs 26. He's telling Job what he needs to hear. And, you know, far better than soppy sympathy. This is reality. We were reading this morning in Luke, and I think it was Luke 13. And Jesus talks about how, what about the Galileans whose blood Pilate mingled with their sacrifices? Or what about the 18 people who died when the Tower of Siloam fell on them? 
And Jesus gives one answer that we expect and another that really should shock us if we're reading it and thinking about it. Because the answer we would expect is, and it, this fits directly with the book of Job, is, well, were these people greater sinners? No. But instead of saying, I think a modern clergyman would then go on to say, and Jesus, God feels your pain and he's with you and so on. But what does Jesus actually say? It's totally shocking. What about these people who died with this? What about this that happened there? He said, were they greater sinners? No, they weren't. But this happened. You need to know that unless you repent, you will perish likewise or you will perish in the same manner. Wow. You've got to stop and think about that. When people are crying out, Lord, why is this happening? Lord, what's going on here? God's answer is, well, they weren't any worse than you or any better than you. But unless you repent, you're going to perish like this as well. Now, it's a hard word, but it's reality. You see, it's reality. That's the point about this, all of this. It's reality. So that's what I love about the Bible. That's what I love about the book of Job. Um, that's what I love about the fact that God does note what's going on. He does take care of, of wickedness and, uh, and so on. It's funny, there's a phrase that's used here, when you say his anger never punishes. How many clergy say that? Yeah. All right, I'm going to go because my neighbour started knocking again when I was recording earlier. He was knocking and uh, not against me, but he's doing some repairs and he had a drill for a while as well. So I'll leave you with that. But um, yeah, this is Wednesday. So join me on Thursday and we continue. We'll be into Job chapter 36. God bless you. Bye.